Right. I'm just going to assume that all of us are completely on board with interdimensional time travel by this point. Are you seriously asking that, Marlton? After all the crazy, crazy things we've had to deal with since the world went to... Yes, we're on board. Okay, <laughs> okay. No need to get testy. I think we all learned some valuable lessons about teamwork on our last, uh, adventure. Huh? Well, let's familiarize ourselves with the area. Reckon that nearby lighthouse might be a good place to start. Night manufacturer's lobby is behind all this. I just know it. when we got this going on.
So you are what's behind the recently intercepted horde of reanimates. Greetings, children. I can sense you are from beyond this world. Continue the steps you take as they restore the magics around us. If I can harness enough, perhaps I can send you home, locate the beacon, and use it to bridge a connection with the rest of my allies. Excellent, children. This beacon we have created for you should allow us to maintain constant contact and continue to work together for our mutual benefit. Prepare yourselves, then use the beacon to assist my allies in their efforts. I will be in contact with more instructions in time. in our favor for about two fucking seconds. Ah, how interesting. The chalk substance has created lettering on the board. Some of the letters seem to have escaped, though.
or hit you on your way out! That's it. Return to the board to see how you are rewarded. The deceased always leave memories behind, but here those memories can be transformed into unimaginable power to be harnessed. Bonus points! Next time, just give me a blank check. Thank you. 
Many have killed for power, but they are fools. True power comes only from knowledge. Find me those memories, my allies, and bring them to my shrine. Someone threw one heck of a party in here. Please notify Consolidated Coach Corporation or your broken arrow for a five-star fleet. Grab the skulls and get them to me using my machine. The energies inside will degrade if left for too long. Use the altar again to return the spells where it started, if you so require. through the dimensional veil. Humans, if this is true, this energy and data could be extremely valuable in our plan to get you home. Use the beam from the corruption engine we created nearby to wirelessly transmit it to us. What in the world? Ah yes, of course you would be unfamiliar with our world's creations. We constructed it using that, how do you say, lighting house that arrived from your world up on the hill. Its beam of light is used to manipulate energy into data the librarian can absorb. Creation is obviously human crafted, and yet it is faintly similar to devices meant to manipulate native magics in the dark ether. I surmise it was an attempt by your species at replicating a powerful dark ether tool of creation. I must know more. I am uncertain that absorbing more of this unknown data is the correct course of action, librarian. Your willingness to dive into such dangerous energies makes me hesitant. You want to be careful what you put in your body, pal. Believe me, I know. Your hesitancy has been noted. I will have preservationists begin running calculations on likelihood of dangerous side effects from this data. For now, we and our human allies must continue on our path. We will exercise caution and keep at it. Find the other artifact, humans. Fascinating. Another human-built artifact, yet this one was clearly guided by hands from higher beings. 
Your species has quickly become the most interesting part of all my studies. I can feel a darkness in this energy you continue to take in without heed, Librarian. Your memory units are nearly full as is, and something like this could overwhelm you if we aren't careful. Thomas Heron, Guardian is correct in his observation. Your self-made modifications for memory extension will likely not be able to handle data such as this appropriately. Recommended action. Still our only chance at finding a way to restore the magics. Librarian, you are encircling a dangerous threshold. For now, children, find the beacon and move on. Alas, I fear I will never have the time to truly study these scientific marvels. Children, we have detected an artifact dwarfing the last two present nearby. It seems to be causing great interference to local magic currents. It sits on a meteorite, high above us. Yes, this energy signature is many, many magnitudes more powerful than the last two artifacts combined. Find a way to get that meteorite down to us, quickly. sheer size of the data import, our wireless network may not hold up. I would prefer if you took us there in person to absorb the data. We cannot physically leave our home, so I will begin a temporary transference of our consciousness into your automaton friend. He should appear nearby afterwards. Remove his head and take us to the final artifact. An ally on site and one overhead, as it were. I'm liking my chances a lot more. fluctuating around it. This will take me a while to scan. Please hold. Otherworldly magic still resonating with this device have trapped us and are calling out to any undead that can feel its presence. What he means is, this thing is ringing the damn dinner bell. Prepare yourself for a battle, flesh warriors. 
The undead seek to end our journey before it truly begins. I believe in you, children. Defend yourselves for a bit longer. Unbelievable. Quick summaries of scans show the amount of data contained here is colossal. Transferring to memory banks for full scans. Instant kill. Failed. Wait, why are we still in the human's automaton? It seems in the absorption of this artifact's power, we have crashed our network systems. We are unable to return to our physical forms. Yes, of course. Children, head to the beacon and place us there to continue to the next mission. I will contact you there with instructions to get us back to Olympus base. Excellent plan, Preservationist. You truly are an intelligent creature. Humans tally-ho to the lighthouse at once. I am quite eager to see what this pyramid's data will hold. A slight problem with your plan, gentlemen. The corruption Max engine will require a large singular charge of ethereal energy into the heart to trigger a manual reboot. And I do not believe humans possess the capabilities to wield such power naturally. I know what they are. They are the memories of memories. The leftovers of your forgotten world. The priests once spoke of such things. They called them Jukoka. They still have my memory. Jukoka coaxed them about. It appears that these Jukoka still remember some objects. Keep satiating their hunger. Yeah, they can show us. 
coming up! Get back! No! That's too close! Such an object can channel unimaginable power. It would serve well in construction of a godly weapon. Oh, 
Max ammo would sound pretty fucking sweet right about now. Base, the last bastion of the home of our people. Place us onto that nearby console and find a way to reconnect our data batteries back to the central processing unit. Do your thing. Maybe tell Rustman a little more about you and this place. Welcome to Olympus Assembly Chamber. Here we once met to make important decisions together as a race and store memories of our people's history and discoveries in large data banks. The sheer volume is incomprehensible. Therefore, wireless external storage was our only functionable option. However, after the shutdown, they are still in safe mode. We must manually reboot the three data banks one by one. in a time before legend, when it still slumbered. He tasked our people with maintaining his home and protecting the world that had formed around him. Humans refer to it as the moon. However, the construct fully awakening long ago shattered our world. Most of us were lost then. Many of the survivors would end up falling victim to an evil warlord's attempt to overtake the construct. Cortifex. Thank you. 
goddess. What an interesting name. In your language, it refers to a being of immense power. But it is more than that to you, in a way I may never be able to understand. You can't understand it because the names are not meant for us. They're meant for them. Upon their arrival, I analyzed their minds. Through cross-referencing with the 776 tongues of the Dark Aether, I decoded their language. Even what we now call our realm is in their words. I then chose names I felt appropriate to make conversation amongst ourselves and the humans easier. I feel as though I do enjoy the name, though. This feeling of individuality is novel and pleasant. I am feeling what humans refer to as excitement to meld this new data with our archives. Advise. Slow data meld process recommend. Your memory expansions are aging and delicate. There is no time. We simply must get a better picture of this foreign energy while we can. Beginning data merge. Yes, this is... Dear God, this is where he went. Now it all makes sense. Wait, I think something's wrong. I... 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 Weakling. Pathetic piece of filth. That sounds significantly ominous. Have we just made things worse? Librarian sentient stream no longer found. Detecting unidentified sentience that has taken form from Librarian's corrupted data. Librarian? Could he truly be God? You must bow to me or die. Minions, destroy them. Engaging emergency ejection procedure. I detect a signal currently reaching out for the moon from close to where we were before. Grab the automaton head. I will teleport us there. I believe for now, you have the ability to return to the missions we started when you first arrived. However, I feel if we continue this battle against the Falcon, that will no longer be the case. Ensure you have gathered enough rewards for preparations before pursuing the war I sense that he has gone into a nearby lockdown facility in order to construct something foul using our stolen bodies. Once you are prepared, find that place and we will continue.
this suggested solution. Find a piece of technology that can give us the power we need, and take the automaton head we reside into it. Ah! It's almost unfair! And back where I was. Metaphor somewhere in there. Establishing biomechanical connection. Yes, these metals should be excellent for crafting a new body more suited for combat. Yes, and quite so. I will use this energy like a forge's fire to craft us a body built for killing. At attention, men! Let us ride into battle. I have harnessed your human firepower, and am eager to put it to work. To enter a secure human military installation such as this, I believe we will need access to navigational data from the soldiers who worked here. Luckily for you, I have searched through memories of some of the orbs I've collected, and someone remembered where that data can be found. There should be three navigational cards hidden somewhere in the area. I cannot determine their specific location, though. The memories are too corrupted. You heard him, children. Find the navigational cards and bring them to us. Once we interface with the information, we should be able to access Broken Arrow systems and open this base. You wouldn't happen to have any idea where nav cards may be around here. What the ever living fuck is this?
I supposed to do with this? Access. Broken arrow. Navigational guidance programming. Military bypass codes determined. Adding bypass codes to generic portal openings. Subroutines. Now, children, we are ready for the final confrontation. Before we charge into battle, however, I must tell you something. The scribes the librarian left us indicate this thing is also from your world, or rather, was banished there long ago. We call him Agamemnon, the king in purple. He's the amalgamation of the beings known to you as the Shadow Man and Dr. Monty. I recognize that name. He's Richtofen's boss, I think. What is this foolishness? Has your tiny mortal mind snapped? Do you really think you can defeat me? I foresee your imminent death, Dark Prince. Tell me, does the goddess also see her own doom? I reserve a special place for her glorious soul. Do not waver, humans. We must stop this, here and now. If I cannot control your world, I will destroy it. Oh, yeah! Yeah, man! Going out of the blaze of glory! Just like the voice has told me to! I shall fear no evil! chance to surrender. Surrender to your death. down his shield. Attack!
this one thinks I can be defeated. Not so, fool. I will call forth someone more worthy of your strength. The tail open and eat your heart roar. His eyes gleam red, his heart burn. I'm the figure you can't take me alone. And he's down! Take his cannon and blast the face. You will pay for your arrogance. You will writhe in agony for the rest of eternity. Your tortured screams will echo throughout oblivion. I will serve as a warning to others. I refuse to admit defeat in the face of overwhelming force. Max Ammo. Woohoo! We hit the jackpot! Or should I say ammo pot? I am not sure what we can do, children. The heart is destroyed, but he continues to persist. He is still gathering large amounts of energy for something. This will not finish me. Dimensional portal. He's leaving this plane of existence. Yes. He has absorbed enough power to pierce the dimensional veil itself. Should you wish it, the rift would bring you back home. Humans, he is heading not just for the place you came from, but the time as well, and annihilation is his only goal. With a large enough surge of energy, we could destroy that gateway entirely, and send him to the depths along with it. Go big or go home, huh? <laughs> Can I have the go home option? I'll tell you something, Stu. Rust Band thinks we are running out of room real fast. Make your choice, mortals. Go home and begin anew, or put an end to this cycle of suffering for good. We don't have much to do. What is this, infant? Do you think your toy can slay a god? You have given the power of the machine to force us away. The choice is not yet. Let me ask you this, Rossman. Do you even have a 
family. Wife. Cute little kids. Russia band remembers some little ones. They had such big beaming smiles. They laughed all the time. <sighs> right up until when they did. How about you, Misty? Who'd you lose? <sighs> Same as yours, Russ. I had folks that I loved. Now I try not to think about them. Because it just, uh, reminds me that, you know, they're gone forever. I'm just scared, Misty. I like understanding things, and these days I don't understand almost anything. Are we really going to be okay? Hey, hey. We're gonna be okay. Believe me. I'll look out for you, Marlton. You can trust me. I know what I'm doing. My dad was a Marine. Okay, I guess I'm feeling better about all of this. Sorta. Time to stand and fight! And so it was. The champions of humanity gave up the very last thing they owned to save us all. Their lives. As the depths of the dark ether swallowed them whole, taking a great force of malice and death along with them, their faces did not show regret or remorse. Rather, they told of an unfettered determination, the likes of which is only seen in humankind. An inability to give up, roll over, and let evil win no matter the odds they seem to face. Against all of our calculations, they managed to keep the false parasite King Agamemnon from regaining a foothold in this realm, even after how powerful he had become. While the future of the Dark Aether from here forward is uncertain, there is one thing we have learned for sure. In a world of demons and gods, the greatest unknown factor is humanity, and their capacity for both good and evil.